Hello everyone. Welcome to the audio book. This is Sureka Ramachandran. Today's book is Ground Water. Okay guys, let's go inside the book. When the water runs out, picture getting up one morning, turning on the faucet and getting nothing but a gurgle. This happened in a part of California that is famous for its fruits and vegetables. Years of drought, that means little rain. To irrigate their crops, farmers pumped huge amount of ground water from under the land. The result was some 2,000 dry wells in 2014. Unfortunately, California isn't the only place with a water crisis. Water in the ground is equal to ground water. Ground water fills the spaces and cracks between rock, sand and soil underground. What and where is ground water? Many of us look at a globe and think the planet holds plenty of water for all our needs. Most of Earth's water is in our ocean, however, and full of salt. Fresh water keeps us alive, yet very little of Earth's water is fresh. Of that small amount, most is frozen. Scientists say that 99% of Earth's usable water is in the ground. Most groundwater is stored beneath land in aquifers. These are underground layers of rock, gravel and sand that holds the groundwater like a huge sponges. Rain and melting snow flow very slowly into the surface soil and rock to feed the aquifers. Aquifers can reach down thousands of feet and extend for thousands of miles. They feed our rivers, lakes and wetlands. The freshwater also irrigates the best farming area in the world. For more than a century, people have been pumping billions of gallons of water from underground to drink, grow crops and meet other needs. Even during a drought, communities and farms above aquifers can draw groundwater. It keeps many of us from going hungry and thirsty. The trouble is that groundwater levels are falling fast. People near and far must conserve the life-giving resource. Too many straws. We are pumping groundwater faster than nature can replace it, experts say. Since 1995, water levels have dropped in almost two-thirds of the wells across the United States. Ups and downs. The Ogallala Aquifer. The Ogallala Aquifer waters the wheat field of America, but the water can't last forever. This map shows water level changes in the aquifer over a span of about 60 years. In some places, water levels are largely unchanged today. In others, they have crashed. Competition for groundwater is causing conflict in some farming areas. In Northern California, for example, winemakers grow fields of grapes which need large amount of water. Many of these winemakers have drilled deep wells to make sure they can get the groundwater they need. Without it, they might go out of business. Many smaller farmers and homeowners nearby, though blame winemakers for sucking up too much of groundwater they all share. In many cases, these smaller property owners cannot afford to drill deeper wells for themselves. As a result, their swallower wells go dry. It as if everyone has their straw in the same drink, but some farms and business can pay for more and longer straws. This problem raises big question. Who owns groundwater? What is fair? Water fights. Halfway around the world, Pakistan's water supply has dropped by almost 75% in the last 60 years. Many in Pakistan blame India, their neighbors to the south. They accuse India of building dams that block river water that would normally flow to them. They say this has forced farmers in Pakistan to pump more groundwater. India says Pakistan has only itself to blame. It says Pakistan has managed its water poorly. Today, both countries, countries that have fought for wars against each other in the past, face water shortage and growing competitions for fresh water. Experts predict such battle over water will grow worse. If nothing changes, they estimate the world will fall 40% short of its water need by the year 2030. Nearly 2 billion people worldwide could face severe water shortages leading to food shortages and famine. In time, shortages like these can even lead to war, experts warn. In some places, lack of water has already done just that. In Shriya, for example, drought may have helped start a civil war in 2011. As a result, many Shriyans have died. In many places, groundwater is that important. The difference between green farms are dusty fields, life are death. Staying out of trouble. There is an old saying, it is easier to stay out of trouble than get out of trouble. This is true about groundwater. Fixing this crisis now will be much easier than waiting until aquifers run dry. We have to plan ahead, however. 
One growing threat to our groundwater supply is climate change. Almost all scientists who study the earth now agree that it's getting hotter. Climate change may also mean less rain for some areas and fresh water may be harder to come by. Another huge challenge is earth's growing population. More than 7 billion people live on our planet now. The figure is expected to reach 11 billion by the year 2100. All of us will need the water to drink and grow our food. We must manage our groundwater now and we can. Farming smarter. Our best hope is finding way to use less water and keep more groundwater in the ground. Expert estimate that about 65% of the fresh groundwater Americans pump to the surface is used to irrigate crops. Yet many forms of irrigation waste water. They spray and sprinkle water on the surface where much of it is lost to evaporation. More farmers are using new ways to make sure every drop counts. New meters monitor moisture in the soil and turn the irrigations on and off to wasteless water. Many fruits and nut orchards now bury irrigation pipes to wasteless water too. Planting different crops can also help conserve groundwater. In states such as Kansas and Iowa, some farms are switching from corn to other crops since corn requires a lot of water. Farmers need new ways to farm. If they do not choose to conserve water, empty aquifers will force them to. Future Focus Record drought forced California to conserve water. In just six months, people there went from using as much as 140 gallons, 530 liters per person to just 67 gallons to 54 liters a day on average. Across the United States, small changes in water use can save hundreds of gallons in the average American home each week. The trouble with toilets. Did you know that toilets use more water than anything else in your house? They do. According to a 2016 study of water use inside 23,749 homes spread throughout the United States but not as much as they did in a similar 1999 study. Newer, more efficient toilet helps send less water into the sewer. Some families also practice selective flushing. That means they don't flush the toilet each time they use it. By installing low flush toilet and taking shorter showers, we can use less groundwater. Another small effort that can save gallons is running only full loads in washing machines and dishwashers. Some people are also saving water by replacing thirsty grass in their yards with plants that need less water. Saving our groundwater isn't easy. People need to drink. Farmers need to irrigate crops to grow our food. Still, we can be smarter about how we use this resource both now and far into the future. Hello everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this audiobook. We will meet in next audiobook. If you like this audiobook, please click the like button, share and subscribe it. Thank you.